Uh, with no further ado, our special guest today is none other than Grandmaster Pia Cramley. She's the fifth female in history to earn the Grandmaster title. Now there's 40. So she was quite a trailblazer. And she recently just came from the Olympiad where she got the gold medal for her team, Sweden. So an absolute boss of the board with uh, decades of longevity and success. We're very lucky to have Pia Kramlin to talk to us today about her recent success. So I'm very happy to be invited here. Hello, everyone. And um, I am more than anything, I am a passionate chess player. Next year, I will celebrate 50 years playing chess. It's quite a long time. And I keep on playing. It's because I enjoy chess so much. Uh, I started to play chess because I have a brother and I did everything he did. So that's why I came into chess. And later on, I met Juan Manuel Bayon Lopez. He's a Spanish grandmaster. And we are now living together since 35 years. We have also a daughter, Anna Kramling Bayon, and she's also a chess player. So I was a little bit brought up in a chess family and I now have a new chess family. And not uh, long ago, we came home from the Chess Olympiad. And for me, the Chess Olympiad, this was the 41st, 44th Olympiad. And for me, it was the 30th, 30th, one, three times I played Olympiad. The first one I played, 78, when I was 15. I was a reserve player, but it, it went quite well for me. So I played most of the games. I played 11 out of the 13 games. And then I played four times with a woman team. I played after that, I always played on first board. And so I played four times with the women team, but 1990, the Swedish captain, we had the same captain for both teams. He uh, invited me to play in the open class. So during the Olympiad 1990, 1992, 1996 and 2000, I played with the men in the open class and there was just, you know, I was so amazed. I was so happy to to chance to play with them. But then the last, I did well the first three Olympiads, but the last Olympiad, it didn't go well for me. And I just felt, I'm not so young any longer. I was getting close to 40. I just felt next time I play in the national team, I will go back and play with the women. So um, 2004, I was invited again to play with the women's team because you see, I play lots of times, but I haven't played all the Olympiads. And it was held in Spain. We were living in Spain, so it was quite natural that I was going to play. And then uh, my Juan Bayon, my life partner, <laughs> he was he was the captain. And our daughter, Anna, she was also coming too. But she didn't play yet because she was only two years at that time. So since 2004, I played now five more Olympians, always with the ladies, always with Juan Manuel as the captain for the team, which means very, very much to me. But I'm also very happy that I have a Swedish player. They are they enjoy the having there. He can help all of us. And the last two Olympiads, my daughter also has played. And this is really a little bit like a dream for me and for us. And the first Olympiad she played was 2016 in Baku. And I was only 14. She she break my record. I was 15 when I played my first Olympiad. She was 14. So she was young and she was very happy for it. And then she also played uh, this year. And this year she played on, on the third board. And uh, we did very well, the team, uh, all the way. I mean, everyone was generally playing against high rated players, except me. I normally play against, play with less rating, but, uh, and we beat strong teams like Spain. We made a draw with Holland, we beat Israel, which is fantastic for Sweden, because Sweden is not so strong in chess in the, in the women competition and also not in the open competition any longer only if you go 100 years back sweden used to be among the first five but now there's so many other countries catching up passing us and what i like with olympiad so much because it's a team competition it's very lovely to play in team together with your friends if you have a good atmosphere it's just fantastic but it's also very, very special to play in a team competition where almost all countries in the whole world is competing. So in this year in Chennai, in India, where the Olympia was held, it was like 100 
88 teams in the open class, 186 nations, because India could play with three teams. And in the women competition where I was playing uh, with my team, there were 162 and 160 nations. So this is very, very many countries from the whole world. And it's just, just a wonderful uh, tournament. And um, so, yeah, maybe, uh, I don't know, shall I start with some chess or shall I? I don't know. I just want to, hmm? Yeah. Yeah. I, if anybody has one specific question about what Pia just said, that would be amazing. Otherwise, yeah, let's get into the chess. Yeah. And by the way, we have people from all over, Pia, from Namibia, I see from Uganda. We've got um, a player from Brazil here. Um, of course, the United States and Kenya, which is the two countries that started with. Just yeah, yeah, no, it's just, just amazing, and that's what that's what I I mean I really love you know the when you focus the bubble I am when I play chess, but also this uh, meeting people from all over the world, and I've been traveling a lot, and then you know when I sit at the board, I never know I mean I can meet anyone, and that's just just a wonderful call. It's a little bit like taking away these borders we have, these walls, when we are meeting each other at the chessboard, and yes, I just. I just love it. And yeah, maybe I should start with um, with some games. I just wanted to say also that of all these 13 Olympias I have played, the one in India was the most amazing of everyone. They organized it so well. And it was, yeah, so uh, I enjoyed it so much to play there. And and this is also one reason why my play was uh, fine, because it's so important to be happy when you play. And I, I was just enjoying everything there in, in Chennai. That's so, beautiful. That's beautiful. Thais um, from Brazil has one question for you before we yes, get started. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just happy to hear that. Hmm? Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. It's a big honor to hear you. I'm a big fan, I have to say. And I, you mentioned that uh, Sweden is not so good in women chess. But how is chess in Sweden for women? How popular it is? And why do you think that we, you don't have so many Sweden women good at chess as you? <laughs> um, in Sweden, um, chess is not a sport. And I think this is a big disadvantage because it's just nothing. It doesn't belong to culture. It doesn't belong to sport. It little bit stands alone. So there are some actual disadvantages with this. And the federation is not a professional federation. It's more like an amateur federation. And then in Sweden, um, we have this tradition that we all play together. And in one way, this is good. So I was brought up always playing with the boys. Um, I, I, I won the school championship always with the boys and uh, we have almost no, um, no championship for girls. We have one once a year, only one, one week in a year, which is very little. And we have, we don't have, now we had a team championship for women after 20 years, it came back, which was very popular. We, it's a weekend. We had also um, seen a rapid Swedish champion in, in, in rapid and blitz, which also came back, back after six years. But these are maybe the only three championships we have. And it's very unusual to see tournaments special for girls or for women. And I believe that for the, because we have girls who win this all over competition with the boys at young age, it happens all the time. It's, it happens, but what we have, uh, so in younger years, we have more girls playing, but there are still uh, a few among all the boys. And when the girls become older, they are just leaving more and more. And I believe that uh, this is very typical in the Nordic countries that we don't have so many, uh, that we don't have specific women tournaments in general. We have it, but very few. And it's the same in the all Nordic countries. And it's my belief, but it's my personal belief that uh, uh, the Nordic countries are considered to be more equal uh, between gender. And this is why uh, I believe we have more resistance to organize specific women or girls tournament here, because people think it's not needed. 
but I believe that to have lots of girls playing, lots of women playing, um, you need to have tournaments, you need to have trainings where the women or the girls are many. And the easiest way to be many is to have a specific woman or girl tournament. So I believe that this is the problem we have in the Nordic countries because um, the number here are much less. But those few who still continue, so for me personally, it, was, it wasn't a problem because I had some few girls' friends, they left, but chess was so important. I had my brother, so I kept on playing and I always had to compete with the boys. So I always have to be one of the best among the boys, which was good to become a stronger player. But this is, I believe, the problem why we have so few girls. But now we have started with trainings for women. We started training for girls. We have even clubs who wants to encourage training for girls. So, the, so we try to give the girls double chances. So it's just changing. It's become a little bit better. But I believe this is the reason why we are so few. So in Sweden, if you look at among the player with ill rating, the women are 3%. So it's a very, very low number if you compare also with other countries, Western European countries. Hmm. I love that, Pia. In fact, we, USA is one data point because we used to have very few girls tournaments and uh, the percentage mm -hmm. of players was like five, six percent. Mm -hmm. And now it's like about 14 percent. So it's really more than doubled. Um, and we have like dozens of girls tournaments now. So, I mean, it sounds kind of obvious if you have girls tournaments, more girls will be in your federation. Mm -hmm. But it, yeah, it shows that there's a, a demand for them, that people like them and that they they stay playing. I know a lot of people have tried to make the argument that the reason Nordic countries have fewer female players is because the more gender equality, the more people just choose what they want to do. Um, have you heard that argument before? And what do you think of it? Um, I'm not sure if I heard that. No, I, yeah, no, but, but that surprised me. I don't believe it's like that. I just believe that when you go to the clubs, because the club always said, the, the women, you are welcome, but they didn't do, make an effort for the women to feel welcome going to the clubs. And then when you notice that you are just so lonely there. So yeah, it just became a problem. I think, and the problem was also, I believe that in Sweden, we were not really aware of that it was even worse in the Nordic countries and Sweden than in other countries. They just thought that it's like this everywhere. Hmm. Great. Well, a really interesting conversation that uh, we'll get into more, but uh, now let's see some of uh, Pia's chess. And you can write in the chat also the ones who were also in the Olympiad, because I think Pia was not the only one who was there. Ah. Yeah, and it would be very nice to see who, who more was there. And who wants to be there in the future? Yeah. I know we have some future and current Olympians here, that's for sure. Yeah, Bernice, you were, were you at the Olympia this time or just next time? I think next time, right? Next time, yes, love it, love it. Yeah, and it's really a dream tournament to play the Olympia. It's just, just amazing, fantastic. Okay, so I have taken now, I will show a game, but the curious thing with this game is that it actually got with two games. And in the Olympia, in this is kind of round seven, um, and Sweden, yeah, I, I said that it was, we were, there were 162 teams. Sweden, we were rated like 33. So I uh, guess, so you know more or less how, how we are in, in, in the level. But actually our captain said that we, we got five players, but if one of these five players couldn't play, he had big problems to find the next player because there's so few people to choose from for the team. So, but let's start with the first game. Um, I um, was playing on the first board with white. I was going to play against a player. Her name is, um, uh, I have to check here now. Her name is uh, Emmanuel Ng. And she has a sister. She's 21 years old. She has a sister and her name is Chian Yunis Ng. I have a little difficult to pronounce her last night, their last night. But um, we, when we prepared for this game, it was actually after the free day, but only in the morning we knew who will play because we know the team on the free day, but the four players out of five, we only know in the morning. 
And when we were preparing, we, we saw that both for our opponent, both my opponent and Anna, my daughter, who was sitting on the third board, her opponent, that they both liked to play the same line. And this is actually what happened. So we prepared to play the same plan against both of our opponents. And the first move became the same. So it started like this. Let's see here. It was E4. We are black both. I said I was white, sorry. We are black, both my daughter and me. I play Sicilian. I keep on playing Sicilian all the time, my daughter too. And then this is a little bit surprise, but we were uh, expecting it because normally you go out with a knight first before playing um, d4. But you can play like this. And now, instead of playing maybe knight if and try to take the pawn back with the knight, they both played c3, and this is inviting to Mora Gambit. So it's absolutely possible to take the pawn, to play, to develop. I guess we'll make some few moves, like this perhaps, a6 and castling. And here, black has a pawn more, but we see that white has developed three pieces, castle. So white is, is uh, much quicker and have some open lines to try to attack uh, alone. So it's 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 possible to play with white. I have played this position with black, also possible to defend with black. But this day we both decided, no, we don't want to play this. We don't want to let white have what they want. So um, so after C3 here, we didn't take the pawn. We both played knight f6 attacking. And after e5, knight d5, we are getting into another line and Ala, I think it's Alapine. A C3, Sicilian, and white to C3 against uh, Sicilian. And here the most common is to, to take back with the pawn or perhaps develop the knight first and then you take back. But we have seen that our opponents like to take with the queen. And um, it's not so popular any longer to play like this. I think it's because it's maybe not so easy for white to get advantage, but it's an interesting idea. So we defend it our knight and now bishop d3 came and the most normal is first to play knight d3 and then bishop d3 and this move made me confused so anna was sitting two boards away i didn't know what had happened i didn't know she had the same position on the board because i was very focused and i'm using glasses i don't see so well far away so i started to think here because if she would have played a normal move, knight f3, I would have played in the same way Anna played. But now I got confused and I started to think and use a lot of time. And I will show you uh, the moves, how I play. We both play this next move, which is very logical. Uh, attacking the queen, attacking the pawn on e5, white has to go uh, to, to defend it to e4 on this square. And here we yes play different ideas and while i was thinking long time anna she played her most quickly and we will come back to her game but i will just show you briefly my plan and this is a little bit what's so exciting with chess if you put up a position you sit some friends together and you want to make some moves some ideas everyone almost want to make different plans so my plan was this i played up with the queen, I'm attacking the pawn on e5 here, and uh, she defended. And now I played a very, uh, it's, it's a bit unusual, but I've seen this idea, and I didn't, I hadn't prepared it for this game, but I've seen this idea you know, other times when I've been looked at, look, looking at this position. And my plan is actually to take away the strong bishop for my opponent. And the strong bishop is, is this one, it's the d3 bishop, because it's just looking at the king side and it's an attacking bishop also with the pawn on e5, uh, which is on the black square. They are a little bit like a time when they're working together while not taking control of lots of square. So I played this one, knight d4. And my idea is simply, I want to change my knight for her strong bishop. and. I just want to, to, if you want, you can, uh, I want to ask you what you think white should play here in this position. If, where white should, what white should do with the bishop or if white should just remain. And the point is that it, it's not possible to take my knight because uh, the queen, it's, 
figuring C1. Um, or maybe we can start with what move is not possible for Y to make. Because this is a little bit tricky position for Y. There is actually one move moving the bishop to one square, which would lose immediately. And so what, what's the move Y shouldn't play here? Oh, we have a few questions. We have a few answers. Castles okay. says Maureen and Liliana. And then I think Nethra wanted to unmute. Um, so I thought of the move castle to, um, to um, not, I mean, you're going to lose the bishop here. Um, so either castle or bishop e2, maybe. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know, my opponent, she was thinking for a while and she did what all of you did, what all you have said. She castled. And I will just show you that it's a little bit tricky because if you play bishop e2, which looks like a natural move to keep the bishop out the castle and then my knight has to go back and then you bring the bishop back to e2. But this is actually losing. And now, how I, is it losing? Yeah. That's a good, that's a good yeah. question because this is very yeah. tricky. Yeah, it's very tricky. I don't know if anyone wants to guess or if I want. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we could, could ask people to either private chat me or raise your hand. Mm -hmm. This is a really good one. Let's see. Does anybody see it? Um, tell us where you're from when you get called on, by the way. Let's mm -hmm. see. Any Anyone think they know? Bernice, what do you think? Hi, I'm Bernice. I'm from Kenya. Um, I think knight x c3. But if I take on c3, uh, white can just take back. So it's it's just, I would lose a piece. But what we can think of is that this square on c2, if I could make, if I could just get away with the queen, there will be fork on c2. So is there some way we can just force the queen to... Yeah. I think we have some other people saying things in the chat. If anybody wants to finish this off, or Shreya, what do you think, though? Sumaish, Sumaish, you want to unmute? Um, of course, I think that's Elizabeth Cassidy. Where is she? Sumaish. That that must be your mom's name, huh? Yeah. It's. Uh, I wanted to say yeah, my name is Elizabeth Cassidy, and I'm from Nairobi, Kitale, and Kenya. And uh, my move is knight takes f6. Exactly. Because uh, now we're hitting the knight, and this knight is defended by the bishop on f8. So it's not possible for white to take it. And now white has to move the queen. And wherever white will put the queen, I don't know, queen c4 or whatever, there will be this fork. Yeah, I, I asked, yes. And we will have the fork on c2 and yes, win, win the game. So, so that's why it's a little bit tricky with uh, for 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 white here. White could also play like bishop c4, but then I would have actually just yes, played this maybe f5 first. I hadn't decided, and I would have taken the bishop. And now it will be a little bit difficult for white to get to castle. So, um, so so it wouldn't really change anything. So my opening play. Yes, castling. I will just show, yes, I played f5. It's possible to take the bishop right away, but I wanted to open the f line and she moved. I took b6, rook e1, bishop b7. And I will not speak so much more about my game, but I was very happy when I had this position because I am have the bishop pair and I have this bishop, you know, looking down to white's king side. I have also, when I will go bishop e7 and castling, and when I have castle, I will have the, uh, I can just make just some quickly, some moves more, let's see. c4 was played here and castling. And now you see that I will have some ideas with knight g4, and my rook is also playing. So I was just very, very happy to have this position. And later on, I went to win uh, the, the game. But uh, so this is what happened in my game. So let's go back and see what happened in my daughter's game. And so she also played knight c6, queen e4. But in this position, she played uh, another plan, which I was planning to play too, but I got so confused by my opponent playing bishop d3 instead of knight d3 that I changed my mind. So she played f5. And f5 is a little bit 
one idea is now now you can take this is what they like to do if you go down here this is absolutely possible but now we see that this bishop on d3 is not so dangerous any longer against the king side and maybe later on black can uh, ma maneuver uh so, so it's it's just it's not so much danger to to put the king with a pawn on f5 and that's why when i played f5 my opponent took uh, Anna's opponents took, she took back. Mm -hmm. And here you can go queen e2 or queen h4. But the opponent wanted to keep the queen close to the king side. And now the idea is to play bishop g6, just to force the king to go out on the board. So Anna didn't like to allow it. She played this knight e5. So she's threatening bishop, but she's also defending g6 square. Moving. And now she took squares in center. This is a very nice d5. White developed the bishop. Black put the bishop on the best square towards white's king development. And now it's not possible to castle because if castle, you take, take, and the pawn is hanging. So, and after king, white just yes, develop and has poor more is just yes, much better for white. So black has to prepare this. So Anna, yeah, she played this very natural move, h6. She's not threatening to take the bishop, but she's planning to cast them now because now there's no more threats against h7. So white developed the knight. And now Anna did something I think was a very nice move. She, she kept the knight. And sometimes this is very important to think of what pieces do I want to have and what pieces do I want to exchange? And here we can see that this knight on d2, the best square for is it becomes the f3. And so to help white with exchange on f3, we just let this knight become active and white is taking away a good knight for herself. So it's better to keep the knight on the board. And Anna decided to keep it close to the king side. So she played knight f7. And now f7 is, is quite a good square for a knight because it defends the king. And sometimes we say that the best defender of a king, it's a knight. And now uh, she's actually planning to take on g5 because also defending the rook. So her opponent, maybe the opponent should play, uh, I don't know, you can give a check here. After a check, the king would move, but in this position, the best for white would actually be to change here. And in a position like this, uh, it's about it's about equal. Black has the bishop pair, has lots of pawns in the center. White will try to open it, but I would prefer black because the bishop pair is is a long term advantage, and it's something you can use the whole game, and it becomes stronger in the end game. But maybe it's about level. So this is what white could attack. But white wanted to play this move because now again we cannot take the bishop because now the rook is hanging because this knight on f7 is peed. So Anna Castle, that was very natural. And now it's a threat to take on f6. And probably the best white can do is to take, now it's a threat to take the bishop, sorry, g, take on g5, not on it. And now, sorry, the best white probably can do is to play the end game. But again, this will be pleasant for black. It's, it's just a pleasant position, maybe white get equal but not more than that so and this was not uh, what uh, white plans white went back with her bishop uh, Anna took the center with the pawns and now it almost looked like black is white black is pawn on d5 and e5 white has only a pawn on c3 all other pawns are on the first rank and we can see that white with choosing this opening where you go out with the queen very early it's something dangerous because white has been playing with the pieces and not with the pawns and and still hasn't castle so already here black has the nicer position with the space so here white maybe I should feel the danger but it's a little bit late here but she played castling and now anna has a very very nice plan which is actually winning the game and it's it's not at all easy to see, but if you want, I can, we can have a little bit of look, or otherwise, um, I, I I will show you. 
but it's it's just it, it's not so easy to find this plan but what is actually she's playing against is this queen it doesn't have so many square the queen is a little bit awkward on h4 so she has a plan to play against this queen yeah shall i start shall i show the next move or shall we have a little bit of um movie? does anybody maybe somebody could try to give an answer and then you can show does anybody have an idea here even ellen can answer if she wants <laughs> Because we have so we don't have that much time, so we can let what the kind ringer. Of discrimination is this, Jenna? Yeah, um, you, you don't you don't let her. Well, we cannot have any discrimination in the club. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. <laughs> so she is, of course, this freedom of speech. Yeah, Ellen can... is a is an expert. W, WFM or I am right? Oh uh, yeah, I'm a <clears throat> right now. I'm a WIM, but yeah, should I say? Yeah, um, yeah, I've sure. Seen it. I've seen it before, so. Um, yeah, I, I, I memory, actually watched. So. Yeah, I watched Anna's video, um, which analyzed this game. But um, I think the move is knight h eight, and then after the bishop moves back, say to c two. Yes. Um, then e yeah. four, which attacks the knight, and then knight g six is coming, which traps the queen. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so exactly. good. Yeah, so it's, it's just very nice. This is what happened after knight h8. And the difficulty with this move is it because it's a backward move. Normally, we always want to go forward and to go backwards and also to put it on the last rank. It's not safe, but it's very nice because uh, kicking the bishop and now afterwards playing e4, now we're threatening the knight. And as to say, if the knight moves, we have knight g6. And it's like that, that when Anna was playing in the evening, she was analyzing her game on her. So, so it was, yeah. And I, I thought, yes, this is just very, very beautiful. You see the queen cannot go anywhere. So Anna had to, so white had to, in this position, white had to give the piece. And she just, so she had to take, Anna took back. She took an E4. And now normally when we are winning material, we want to change queens, but we always have to be a little bit careful because it, Anna would like to change queen here first, but then it's this in-between move and white would be winning because you won two pawns and you keep the bishop. So she had to take back on e4, white took back. And here we can see that uh, white has only got two pawns, black has the bishop pair. So this is just winning position and you can play in different way, but Anna wanted to play in very energetic way and it was just very nice what was coming here in later on in the game. She kicked the queen, check. In this position, I would have played a very solid knight f7 to get my knight into the game. This is because I play very solid. Anna, she had some other plans. She just played bishop e6. She didn't care about the pawns. She activated the rook. She didn't care about the second pawn. And now she only had two pawns. And all of a sudden, white has four pawns for the piece. But now you can see the plan. She put her pieces, she put her other bishop against the king. So now she had two bishops looking at the white king. She still has a piece bar and she's planning to take on f3. And then after, so she's planning to take here. And when they take back, she's just planning to bring in the king. And also there the rook might come in with, you know, here. So, so after bishop e6, uh, white was getting nervous to keep the knight there and she moved the knight and now how can black decide the game with an attack in this position yeah this is very important to remember this uh, tactical motif as well mm -hmm. because you have it in it has decided many many games and i think all grandmasters has won some game at least with this tactic mm -hmm. so please remember this one because uh, it, it can give you games and tournament victories. And yeah, so there are patterns, and this is one of these uh, yeah tactical patterns, which is very important to know. Hmm. Linia, I think you could probably play bishop takes h6 and then um, queen h4 check. Here? Yes, queen h4. Now we got the queen in for free. Yes, here. How we continue now? Maybe um, rook f5 and bring it to h5. Yeah, but this is a little bit, uh, even, uh, yeah, but this is a little bit slow because we will have f3 in the end. 
So we can also of the rookie five. Now maybe I, I will just grab this and I take the next rook with Chai. So we need to do something quicker because also if you get your rook to h5, we will have a free. You will have checks, but the king will escape with this little move. Yes. So you need to. Oh, sorry. So can we just open up the king position even more? Delilah. Um. Can you do queen g4? Yes, queen four is a good way to try to open up, but white has this f3. So we just close in the diagonal, and now uh, g2 is, is not attacked more than by the queen. So it's not enough for black. This is, this is a great move. And this double bishop sacrifice is, like Ponte said, is a one pattern that is not enough to sacrifice one bishop. You need to sacrifice both of them, and you need to have. So, so here, black, white has to take the king, the bishop. And so this is what happened. Uh, and I gave a check to bring the king to the h file. And now we just need, because the queen cannot uh, win the game alone, it needs another piece. So how are we bringing in another piece to, to attack the white king here? Um, Thais in the chat says rook b5, so does Sana. Yeah, yeah, that's great. The rook five, and now we see the rooks are so strong when there are no pawns to defend with the open fives. Now rook h five is coming with mate, so the only way to avoid it is bishop c five. And now, how shall black continue here? Because this is not completely easy in this position. Actually, there are maybe two ways. But one is better than the other one. Mm -hmm. um, Tosha, did you want to say? I was saying in the other position when I I think bishop times g two would be good because when the king captures because anything else can't capture and he would kind of be stuck there if he captures or when he captures. Um, he would be more like easy to get because he's out of like the box. Love mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Tosha, can you remind me where you're from? I'm from Uganda. Well, great to see your face on the on the camera. Love it. Um, good job. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. Bernice, did you want to finish up the maid here? Because I see you have your hand up, Bernice. As does Delilah. Queen f4. She wants to go queen f4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can go queen f4. Absolutely. I go king e2. And how will you continue now? Queen g5. Yes. Well, let's say I go somewhere. Oh, maybe. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I go here. Yes. Um, rook captures c5. Yes. So this is the right way to play. It's just um, it's just no way for white uh, to defend the mate, and uh, and we can see that's why it was so important to give the two bishops to take away the only defense white had, the pawns. And we see the queen on a seven is so far away; it cannot help uh, the white king, and also the knight on d two cannot do anything. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay, we can play. Oh, maybe we can play like this. Maybe it was a better way. Yeah. Yeah, maybe this is. Yeah, we have a better way to play this, actually. But even this is still, it should be good here. Knight H2. Uh -huh, yeah, okay, this is still winning. But we had a better way. I will yes, you. It's exactly the same plan. But I just preferred in this position here. I just prefer to play queen h5 directly here. And now rook c5. It's exactly the same plan, but with queen on h5, it's a little bit better placed because after now knight f3, we just go king here. And after king h2, it's getting made directly. And after king h1, we just take the knight. And then we will have the mate. So, but. Like, like this. Mm. But the way you said was also good. It will be, um, let's see here, it, it will be winning, but uh, absolutely because, uh, let's see here. 
we had this here, here, here. I went, oh, sorry, I went down here and here. In F1 here, yeah, but this 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 will be yes, very very good for for uh, black anyway. But it will take more time. So the other one is a little bit more exact. So so this is what I just wanted to show Anna actually. But I want to say that this position is tricky because what Anna played, she played something different. She played rookie five, which also looked like a good move. And I, I just want to show you what happened. And after. Because you shall always, as long as you can keep the game going, you find a way to defend, you just keep on. Just keep on to defend, just keep on the game, because it's always possible to make mistake. And her opponent find this way. She got the queen back to defend. Anna won the queen. But uh, now you can take on c5, maybe this is stronger. Anna chose to play it like this. Here, I will just show you some moves here, here, and we got this position. This is still winning, but Anna had to work for 30 more moves. So lots of things, uh, so, so it was very tough, but the other way that you show to give check and to take the bishop would have just been deciding the game immediately. So this was what I wanted to show. Um, from the game we both played. And I don't know if there how much time there are, if there are any time for to show any more diagrams, or maybe it's time to stop here with some questions. I don't know what you say, Yennefer or Pontus. I I think it's great to have some questions, right? Because we're starting the tournament in 10 minutes. So yeah, yeah, there's not much time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Although, yeah. Uh anybody have any questions to kick things off with? Bernie Beatrice, rather. It did anyone in your family who wasn't your brother play chess? Yes, uh, I have only one brother and my brother is four years older. So my father was playing chess. My mother didn't know anything about chess. So when we were kids, uh, we played a lot of board games at home. We made a lot of different sports also. We were playing table tennis. And my father was uh, showing chess to my brother. But I said, no, chess looked so slowly, so boring actually so i didn't want to 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 know i didn't want to be taught chess but then when i was 10 uh there was a chess club started in the neighborhood in stockholm where we live and my brother went there the first day and after half hour when he was telling me yeah you have to go there i finally went there and from the first day i didn't know how to move the pieces but the, the one who founded the club he was sitting with me and from the first day I found the magic of chess and I just love it. Mm. I love that. Yvonne. Oh, I'm I'm asking you to unmute first. Let me actually I'll I'll make it so that people can unmute themselves to make it a little um, I wanted to I wanted to ask um are you the the only strongest woman from Sweden? Yes, I am the um uh, yes, because I'm uh, I, I'm the only one who is a grandmaster, and uh, the the next one it's in the Agres. She's about um, around close to two thousand three hundred. Best yet in two thousand three hundred, but I don't think I I'm not sure if she's a woman grandmaster or not. I I'm not sure she is that. So I am the only one who has become a grandmaster yet from Sweden. Hmm. Laurel, you're you're up. Hello. I was wondering, what do you love about chess? What's your favorite part? Yes, I love. Uh, you know, I love when I'm focused. So it's a little bit when I when I'm in my bubble and I don't know what's happening around, and I know you know what's happening on the chessboard. And this is why when I play in team tournaments, I sometimes a little bit what happened on the board on the side. But then I sometimes don't know what happened, anything before the game has finished. And I love this being in focus when, uh, and I try to uh, find ideas, try to find a way to, to um, uh, I don't know, trick, but to, 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 to try to win the game. So I really love this, this, uh, this focus of not knowing what's happening around. But I also love very much that uh, all my friends I met also, Juan, who is my life partner, who is the father of uh, our daughter. I also met him at the chess tournament. So all my friends 
are chess players. So I met so many people and I really love uh, when I come to the board and I play with someone. And then after we have this tradition that when you play over the board and you meet your opponent, that after the game, you, you, we go together and we analyze the game. And like that, we are, I'm telling my opponent a little bit my ideas, he or she, uh, my opponent is telling a little bit uh, her or his ideas. And like that, we are a little bit teaching each other, but we're also getting to know each other. So the chess world is a little bit like, like a very big family. And I really love that everyone can play. And at the board, we play against everyone. I mean, I sometimes play against very young players, sometimes my age, anyone. So yeah, that's what I allow. It's just, that's what I wanted to say. It just take away borders. We, at the board, we, we meet everyone and we are all equal. Mm. I love that answer. Beautifully said. Um, Tosha. Uh, I, have, I have a question. Uh, do you ever get stuck in a position? Yes, I do. I do lots of time. <laughs> lots of time. I am a big thinker. And I always, uh, this has been my big problem. I'm better now, it's time travel to take decisions. So I get stuck lots of time. And that's why when you see the clock ticking and someone, you have to take decisions. And I try to, uh, when I've been using 20 minutes, I just try to tell myself, no point to go over it again. Now I have to move. And probably I will make the move, which was the first idea I had, which I could have played from the beginning. So love that. Yes. Get, I, I, <laughs> long thing, wrong thing, as they say. Um, mm -hmm. Ellen. Well, oops, I think I Iris is next, but Ellen. Yeah. So previously you mentioned that you think a big way of bringing girls into chess is by holding all female tournaments. But do you think there's another way that we can um, promote chess among girls, either in the local level or internationally around the world? Yes, absolutely. I think it's very important to um, uh, to encourage women, uh, girls, everyone that we play together, that we play also mixed tournament. But what I think is that we have training, you have both training separately you can have, but also together. So you give the girls and the women double chances. So, but I think it's very important that there are some tournaments. I, for example, I love to go to play in Gibraltar. And what to do in Gibraltar is an open tournament. Anyone can play. It's, it's no, you don't have to have a minimum rating. And what to do is to invite a lot of women there. So normally there may be 25, 30% women. And I just think that when, when you organize tournament, that it should be at least a minimum percentage of, of one, of, of of girls so you don't feel that you are too lonely and i also think it's very important to have a you know to have trainers you need to have trainers you need to have um what you call it um, models to look up at which are girls and women so i'm just hoping that the girls who are become a little bit older if they don't want to compete but maybe they want to become trainers maybe they want to try to to somehow encourage younger girls, maybe they want to be arbiters, or it's the same in the clubs. We need to have an atmosphere with lots of women and girls. And so I just think that we need to be uh, encouraged women in all fields. And I believe that in the long run, after when, when there are equal numbers, we don't need to have the separate tournaments, but now we have to have them because we have to be a big number uh, when we are girls or women so so in sweden for example we have this that we cannot make too many women tournaments or girl tournaments. there's so much resistance against that but we have these trainings and we are trying to we have lots of things online also i see you're looking at the clock jennifer so no 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 I, no we've got it we've got one we've got time for one more at least I, iris hmm. thanks thanks for squeezing me in um and thank you for being here and um your game analysis um, I wanted to ask you about you and your daughter it must be so special that you guys are going down the same career path. I think it's rare for kids to want to be like, yeah. even rare for women to be playing chess. Um, I was wondering, um, because you both sort of represent two different generations of women in chess, mm -hmm. can you sort of talk about 
the resources that see that younger women have now that you wish you had and maybe how we could take advantage of those resources. Um, it doesn't have to be about women specifically, but just the modern young chess player. Yeah, um, I, I would be first to say that uh, when I got a daughter, um, uh, my dream was that she was going to play chess. I really wanted it because it's our passion and I really wanted her to share our passion. So, but I noticed when I try uh, to, to uh, so, but I noticed it was so important she wanted it. I couldn't um, encourage, I wanted to encourage her, but not to push her because when I pushed, it was a boomerang and she said, no, no, no more chess. So I think this is very important, but, um, and I'm just so happy that Anna found her way of chess because I think the most, main importance with chess is find the happiness with chess. And for everyone, this is different. For me, it has been competing because this was the only thing I knew. I didn't know the world Anna is went into, she's streaming and, and in the beginning, I was a little bit like this, but I see how much she loves it. And it's just fantastic. And I'm just very happy because Anna is promoting chess to mm -hmm. others. And I'm hoping also to other young girls. And she's, of course, she's almost 40 years younger than me. She's a much younger generation. And I'm just so happy to see all you here, but the young girls playing. So, and I, I my when I've seen young girls playing, because I've seen it, you know, many, uh, also in Spain, that when you're young, it's it's not unusual that the girls win the all boys championships. But what I've seen is that uh, when they're putting too much pressure, I, I think it happens to the boy also, but maybe, and when you put too much pressure, it's, it's just not good. So um, it's, uh, uh, so this is very important that we encourage and we try to do it uh, in a positive way. And that's why I have tried to not to push my daughter too much, but I know I pushed her once. And then she said she didn't want to see chess for some time. And uh, so, and I also believe that uh, sometimes girls get more mature before boys. And maybe this can be an advantage in younger age with, with, with chess actually too. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Pia. By the way, the tournament's just started. So good luck in the games. Pia and I are gonna start looking at the games, but I did start one breakout room. So if you wanted to like pop in and out while we're doing commentary, that's fine. Otherwise you can just kind of uh, mute us when your games are going on. Uh, but yeah, thank, thank you so much for that Q and A. It was amazing. And I'm gonna open up. Do you want to stop sharing your screen, Pia, and I'll share mine? Yes, of course, of course. I'm, I'm okay. Just, cool. Of course, I will stop sharing it. Uh, stop here. Yes, sir. I Perfecto. By the way, I'm I'm also like my teaching my son chess, and Sujana has a five year old brother who she wants to teach chess to. So I I love your advice about not pushing them. Um, but uh, what was the age where you pushed her and she kind of uh, stopped? Uh, you know, um, yeah, Anna knew to play, you know, when she was free, very, very early. And what I did is when she was four, I took her to chess club. And uh, yes, because I wanted her to play with friends, but she only wanted to play with me. And then she said that was the most boring day in her life. In her life. And she didn't want to go to chess club. And in Sweden, we have this tradition. You go up to the club and you meet your friends and you play. And Anna has always been very hesitant to go to chess club. Uh, so I just realized I did it in the wrong way. So that was one way of, of pushing her, which was not good. And uh, so it was it was just actually quite, quite early. And then I, afterwards, I realized uh, when we moved to Sweden, Anna was 11, she had lots of friends in the chess, and then she was just getting much more interested because she had the friends, she had a social life. But those friends were all boys, but it didn't matter. It, it was fine. It was her friends, and she, she wanted to play, and she wanted to compete, but it had to come from her. I could just give the, we could give the possibility, but she had to choose. That, that's very, very important. And I think more important than anything is to have the happiness to choose the tournaments you want to play and enjoy to play. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Well, she seems very happy on, and you mm. do too. So I think you guys, yeah, it's a it's a blessing for sure. Um, 
Well, let's take a look at this position. Uh, we've got uh, actually, oh, our Brazilian uh, uh, participant today is playing against uh, our Kenyan participant. So the, the way they're doing this is it looks like they're going by rating. Um, and it's a typical isolated queen pod position. Pio, who do you like in these positions? Um, um, in general, yes, now I, I actually like, I like why? Because this position is, you play with an isolated pawn, but you have to compensate it with a piece activity. And now we have, oh, sorry, I was a little bit, no, I prefer black position. I was a little bit blind because this is the problem that uh, and now also black is threatened against white king. And the problem for white with this, um, with the D4 pawn is that when you have changed pieces, we have already changed a uh, bishop and a knight. This helps black for every piece you are changing, black who is playing against the isolated pawn, will, it will be, make it easier. And the end game is just, there normally only will be like that black can win the end game. So I, I prefer absolutely a black here. I was just, I was seeing a ghost. I saw something which was not correct. And so that is why I said white. But no, I, I like Black's position because um, because Black, this is very typical when you play against the isolated pawn, you need to uh, control the square in front of the pawn and the square is defined by the Black Queen is occupying and Black is having a grip of this pawn, this square and it's not so easy for, for, for White. So I prefer Black, but it, it's, I mean, a white, white will absolutely fight here. There are some maybe Black squares that White can try to, to use. Hmm. Yeah, really well played game so far. Um, let's see what happens. Queen C6, okay, so she's maintaining this pin. Hmm. Yeah. I guess it, it's a little bit, I think it was a little bit the waiting mode. She didn't really know what, what, what she was going to do. And I think that's why she played queen c6. And also she wanted to avoid maybe rook c1. But so, yeah. So because if then. Rook, oh, if rook c1, do you think the, well, it didn't happen, but you thought the queen takes c1 would be good for black? Yeah, I think it would be good for black because you, you would, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I think so because after you would have had bishop before, you would also win even the first the two rooks and also the bishop in d1. Hmm. Of course, right. Yes, yes. Good point. Let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. So she, so P is saying that not only the main thing here is that after king h2, bishop b4 wins material. Yeah, yeah. Skewer. Nice. Kind of unusual tactic there. All right, love it. Okay, let's see another game. Uh, although that one's actually so interesting. Maybe we should just stay on that just for another second because it's so thematic. Um, Queen e2 now, um, and and looks like Black's ganging up on this pawn because now she's threatening to take here and then to take here. Mm. So actually, yeah, actually now if if Black wants, Black can take the pawn. I don't know if Black wants to try to keep it. But she, she decided to to uh, yeah to activate the knight instead, and that's that's also possible. But it was possible to take the pawn. But maybe she was worried that a black white would get into uh, into position. So now some activity, people, yeah, yeah, maybe some activity here. So let's see what will happen. Yeah, this is very exciting now. What will happen here now? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought she was going to try knight f4. It was going to get kind of wild, though, right? Because you would win g2, but I, I wonder if white could have gotten some counterplay somehow. Um, yeah. yeah, this so, um, that's what you were you were excited about knight f4, right? Yeah, knight f4, and you grab on g2 because the king position will be very weak. And then after d4 is also hanging. And I couldn't see because there's no way for, for, yeah. uh, for white to get into uh, the diagonal. But it... And you could also stop the, the close the diagonal with f5 if it's necessary, which could be important. So, yeah. So, so even I, though there's a few pieces here for white, it doesn't look like there's a way for them to get in. But instead, in the game, we have this position now. So, uh, queen mate is covered by the queen. Yeah, it looks a little bit like white is more aggressive player than black is because now white is trying to to play on the G line and at the same time now uh, the queen is defending against the mate on G two. Mm. But there's still that isolated pawn, so it's still an isolated pawn, and um, but now white has some uh, peace activity. Yes, so. Oh, but somehow white won on time. Okay, yeah, white just was ahead on time. 
uh, yeah, there was a little time Queen Eight, and yeah, she took an easy. So yeah, so, so actually, I think this night change maybe this helped white a bit actually to get activity on the king side, and uh, so, yeah. So, hmm. Because F5 didn't work out well, because then this pawn became even weaker than this one, right? Yeah, but she has to, uh, no, I think maybe she can go F5, rook, uh, what happened? F5, queen, D6, uh, yeah, she needs to go rook, G8 here uh, in this position. Yeah, this she could have played. And uh, so she, so to try to defend, And but white can go some, you could go some, B5, but you will know, just yes, changing. So it's just, yeah. She can go queen, rook g3, absolutely. Uh, yeah, this is a little bit annoying, rook g3. And then, yeah, rook g3 is winning, I'm sorry. Because now when you defend, you have queen take h6. I, I think this should be fine, yeah? Yeah, this That's looks good. very strong. I mean, unless we can get away, no, we can't do anything strong here. No, it looks pretty oh, bad. So yeah, so this is yeah, it's pretty bad. So I think this knight g4 was a good move. That uh, that white, uh, yeah. What so, that? Uh, oh yeah, queen to g4. So you can't take. So queen c7 is a good move. Yes, queen c7 yeah. is a good move because you both um, protect against them. Um, and, and I don't know if you can start, start play some tactical. If you can go d5 here. Oh yeah, fun times, huh? Wait, so what's the idea of D D five if uh, oh there's this is hanging Bishop F five I see yeah. and if Bishop takes D five anyway you wanted to play this yeah yeah so so maybe yeah this is possible but you need yeah maybe you need to grab yeah um, yeah very interesting game wow so very very tactical there yeah. Hmm. Now, how do I find the games that are still going on? I'm sorry, guys. You usually do a uh... oh here it is. I found them. Okay. Usually we do the regular tournaments, but this looks great. Um, let's see some uh, matchups here. Um, there's so many options. That game was so good, so it's hard to beat it. Um, here we got, okay, we got a new game here between mm. um, that girl too from Namibia um, versus Lucky LOL, beautiful. And we looks like we've got a, a, a four knights. Yeah, this is, a very, this is why knight c3 is not so good. This move is very good with white black is playing to take on e4, actually. Now you can take back on e4, you could take an f7, but this is considered fine for, for black now. So so instead of knight c3, the most popular moves are knight g5 or d3. Is there something else I'm missing here? I don't usually play this for white. What else? Knight g5, d3? And castle. Yeah. So you don't have to defend the pawn if you don't want to. So, so this is what you can play, yeah. Hmm. And by the way, you can always go to Opening Explorer here. This is a really useful tool. Pontus and I have talked about this a lot. After the game, if you make a mistake, you can go to Opening Explorer and uh, it can show you what the most popular moves are here. See, D3, Knight, D5, D4. Oh, I forgot about D4, of course. Sacrificial. Yeah, yeah. And so look at Knight, C3 is all the way at the bottom. And, and even more alarmingly, look at how 22% win for white and 46% for, for black. That's weird, right? Yeah. Um, but, but it's because it's just, it, it's just not the, the, because normally you want to put the pawn on C3 and the knight goes another route. Mm, so. Yeah, right. You want to put a pawn here. Uh, also, knight C3 is not such a horrible move that black should be winning such a big percentage. I think it's more of like a correlation. If you're the type of person to play knight C3, then you mm -hmm. might mess up later in the game too, because mm -hmm. that percentage was huge. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think if given the chance here, you probably want to play bishop d3 to keep the um, yeah. Bishop. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah it could be yeah. absolutely because mm. it's such a good piece, especially now that the position's opening up. Mm. Oh, danger! And uh, white black did find the correct move here. Oh, sorry. Bingo. Well done, Black. Well done by Lucky LOL. Let's look at a different game. So nice discovery there. But you know, it's funny, it's like tactics, but tactics also kind of melds with strategy because Black has the two bishops here. So mm. normally White doesn't want to open the game. Yeah, normally here, because you have the Black squared bishop, you want to put the pawn on d3. So a little bit 
And also, you know, as you said, you don't want to open up the position. So you prefer to put it on D3. But what is that maybe later on, maybe black can play H6 and F5. So black will have more, more space. But now, because you lost your, you exchanged your E4 pawn, yeah. So, so it's 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 just more 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 easy for black to play. But the pawn is better on D3, absolutely. And it's very good to look at your bishop. You normally want to put the pawns on the other color than the bishop you have. Yeah. So better position for black, but white's still kicking there. Absolutely. Um, what else do we have? Let's look at some other cross cultural clashes here. We've got. Uh, let's look at this one between Magnetic Glitter and Elizabeth Cassidy. Um, it, oh, look at that. It looked like it was a very interesting opening, Pia. They played the Smith Mora Gambit. I guess they played the Mora Gambit, yeah. And, and Black grabbed the pawn. Yeah, that is the, so yeah, this is all very, well, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I think so here this is wrong. Yeah, here you need to go Queen it too. Queen e2, absolutely. But it's a little bit wrong anyway. Queen e2, let's say we go bishop c5, knight e4. Okay, bishop b4 check. Maybe we will go. Uh, oh. No, after bishop b4, maybe we can go knight take e5, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, bishop d2 is. No, bishop d2 is good. No. So maybe I was wondering, can we take knight take e5 after? uh after here in this position can we after uh, after bishop c5 yeah mm -hmm. maybe there no you can me or not it's a little bit dangerous this maybe maybe some uh, maybe i don't know some bishop f4 but we, we yeah bishop f4 there's a lot of activity here but yeah. maybe we can survive yeah, so you, you have to take on f3 right yeah, take on f3 and, and then play d6 yeah maybe d6 or maybe give the check first yeah and maybe, or, yeah d6 perhaps yeah hmm. Very risky, but now White's down two pawns. So, but anyway, let's see what happened in the game um, because, oh, it was actually pretty interesting as well. Oh, we could have taken on G2 here, but I don't yeah, know. I just know this I'm long puzzling. <laughs> so. yeah, messy, messy. She decided to uh, get herself castled first, okay. She, she, and then, um, okay, it looks like she's gotten a very nice position here though, because she's up. What is it? Two pawns. Yeah, no, this looks very nice. It is like that when you have pawns extra, and now black has developed all the pieces, and white's king is still in the center. So yeah, this is very nice for 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 white if for black king now. Mm. And yeah, very nice. Very mm. Let's move to another game. Um, yeah. This one looks like even material. So oh, not anymore. Look at that. I came and jinxed things. Uh huh. <laughs> Now we can Learn. say that the bishop of h2 was a little bit badly placed. It should have been an e3, because an e3 you have two diagonals in here, yeah. So now I, there's not so much compensation, for, there's no compensation at all, I think, for, for white here. Let me see what the moment you're talking about is here. Oh, it, she had no choice, I guess. Oh, like, she has to go with bishop h2, yeah. Ah, so this is, a, it started as a king's Indian bishop f4 against the king's Indian, yeah. I wonder where it went wrong though. Maybe uh looks like black played really well, I have to say. Yeah. Uh okay, yeah, she play like only now. Yeah, you can play this plan, but the knight should be on C3. It's, it's better that than here. So this is what happened. Yeah. So she went D5, but what's about the knight and B4? It's a little bit out of uh, out of the game. Yeah. If I E4. Ah, this is the move. E4 looks wrong to me. E4, yeah. But I could be, I don't know, I don't play these yeah. positions, but E4 yeah. seems a little odd somehow because she could also play F4 and, and sandwich everything in. Yeah, this one I think yeah. after F4, this poor bishop on H2 and you will start playing with yeah. it. It could be difficult. But you can go A3, knight E6, B4 because this knight on, a, on, in the, on, on the rim will yes be as out of the game, yeah? Yeah, a3, knight, a6, b4 looks better. Yeah. And yeah, e4. Uh -huh. But now e4, knight, d4, will you take it? Hmm. Are we scared of that? e4, knight, d4, um, yeah. take, take this? Yeah, I was wondering. Wow, yeah, that looks that looks risky, but... Uh, yeah, because... it looks risky. But I, I think this is... Uh, I think it's possible to play for white because you just control e4, so voice black, yeah. So let's see what happened. Now we have this position. Uh, uh, but white has won the pawn on before. Um, 
So there is, a, ah, but there's a piece hanging. Yeah, you need to defend the bishop. Yeah, there's only one move here, I think, yeah. Well, actually, white, white, white loss on time, I think, here. So oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see what's going on. Okay, standings wise, we've got a couple of players with five points. Hmm. Um, and let's see, they probably are doing the, I don't know what you call it in chess.com. Is it, is, it, is it also called Berserk? Or does it have another name here? I'm more familiar with the Lee Chess Arena tournaments. But anyway, um, uh, let's take a look at another game. How about um, Shiny Knights versus Tiny? Because I think Tiny might be a new player for Namibia. Or at least new to our tournaments. Okay. Sicilian, my favorite. What's your favorite opening, Pia? Sicilian also. But Black didn't take on d4. Yeah, you 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 can play like this, but most normally you take you open up the position when you have chance. But okay, so now it's a little bit like a kind of Benoni structure, yeah, isn't it? Uh, yeah, bishop d3 doesn't feel right here. Yeah, no, you can you can either go a4 if you want to stop d5. You can go c4 if you like to have the pawn on c4, but maybe a4, or yeah, you can go bishop d3, but maybe bishop e2 is better actually, because b5, c4 is coming. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, but bishop d3 just feels awkward to me, but uh, let's see how she responds. Considering you played it, c4 looks like a good move. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. Let's see what happened. Wanted to open up. Ah, uh, no, c4 came. Yeah, this is very, very um, bad. Bishop takes c4. Good yeah. move. Bishop takes c4. Yeah, you can't, you, two okay. you gotta play this first. Yeah, oh, no, this is hanging. Yeah, this is hanging. I think yeah. it's just, it's, it, it was just a very, very good move. Queen b3. Yeah. Queen b3 is just a very good move. So she played a good plan. Take on b5 and take on e6 and queen b3. It was a very good plan for white. Yeah, just classic double attack and easy to miss c4. Um, so after c4, bishop c4, d5, takes, 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 and now white is just uh, certainly crushing. We'll see what happens there. Mm. Uh, she plays knight c3 here. Rookie one check is also on the menu and getting all these pieces out with tempo. Great stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, white has developed everything and now the king, black king in the middle, and white has it was it, it even two pawns up. So yeah, this is very nice for white. Mm. Let's look at a different game now. Um, how about Nethra um, versus Eliza? Eliza, I believe, is from Uganda, and Nethra is from Texas, so um, two newer players. And here we've got a knight versus a bishop. Newer players to our girls' club. I think this is our, Nethra's first time on it. Hmm. Um, oh, so who, what do you like here, the knight or the bishop? I, I like the knight. <laughs> I like the knight, absolutely. But okay, because also this bishop with a pawn on d5 is, is quite limited. And we have this big issue with the double c pawn. So I prefer absolutely black here. So yeah, yeah. I mean, the double c pawns and the, the bishop unable to move out. Now, knight b6. I would have yeah, preferred. Sure. Yeah. I would have, yes. Why not go like, we could have played maybe. Uh, queen f6, maybe yes, they change, and then you would have won a pawn, maybe queen f6, or maybe queen c7, yes, and then grab the pawn. Yeah, queen c7 is maybe probably what I would have liked to do, I guess. But she oh, did win because white hung the bishop, but that happens, you know, time control. I just think at knight b6, the problem is your knight is way better than this bishop, so when you put it here, though, it it's not actually doing anything, and it's kind of countered, it's like cancelled out with this bishop, so... Yeah, yeah, even. yeah, exactly. And normally b6 is, is in very many positions, it's not such a good square for the knight because it's not on the rim, but it's very close to the rim. And we see it doesn't control as many squares as when it stands on c5 or e5 in the center. So so it's true. It, it would have been better. The knight is not so good there, yes, exactly as you say. It, it will have to come back later on. And I really like your instructive point about how you would play queen f6 because you see that the end game is like really crashing for black. Mm -hmm. um, that I think that's so important. I, I as a somebody who loves middle games, my first thought was like knight at e5, but queen f6, you know, it looks really devastating because you're just threatening to take and take on c4. Yeah, and that is what I thought. I just thought that it is really what we want to do. And yeah, because 
where can you go? Queen D3 doesn't work because 95. So it's maybe almost like you have to change and you really want to play the end games. Then there's no danger at all for, for black. And it's just, just fantastic position to play with this knight. And we know we always will have a stronghold with a knight on C5 later on if you want to come back. But first, first is to win the C pawns. Hmm. Very instructive. You know, great players are really good at knowing when to trade queens. We should have a lesson on that sometime. Mm. But, I, you know, the, the better the player, the more they're comfortable with when that moment is. Mm. Um, because I love to change queens. So maybe I change queens too much. But I think it comes with age also. I, I don't mind to go into the end game. I, 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 like, I like to play it. And when I take off the queen, there's no easy to attack me any longer. <laughs> Let's see, what do we have here? Zori, who is from Uganda and playing against Adego from Kenya. Uh, but this one, white's up a piece, but um, black has, yeah, okay. So white, white should be able to do oh. fine here. Um, let's see about any other games going on. Another one where white is up a piece. Yeah, but this is, it could be a little bit exciting because, okay, you have, we have four against three for white, but we have these two pass pawns. And uh, yeah, so it will be some, but but white will normally decide the game on. Oh, knight g4. Yeah, this was a very good move. Could it have been a mistake? Could it have been that you want to play uh, knight g5? Yeah. Sorry, I know some people are having a few technical problems with the arena. I, I think that's chess.com software. I'm going to blame it on that. It's all automated. And I think they're using a new, it's like a little new, there are new arenas. So uh, yes, bear with that. Um, you know, it's fun that you guys get to play even more games, but there are a couple of technical issues. Um, Nethra, you had a question? Yes. Um, so <clears throat> in my game, um, um, I knew you were guys, I was hearing you um, commenting about knight v6. Um, I was playing knight v6 to protect the a2 pawn because the queen was also attacking the a2 pawn in my game. So, Oh, she wanted, she was worried about queen takes pawn. But your, yeah. Ah, but your bishop, your bishop was hanging on c4, so she can't actually take it. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. It's funny. Okay. He, I didn't, didn't even occur to me because it just seems like... But you're right, she can move the bishop and then take the pawn, but then your seed pawn will be hanging. So yeah, but that that's good that you had an explanation for it. Okay, yes, thank you. Oh, this is becoming such an exciting game now. Oh yeah, look at those pawns. Yes, yeah, so, sorry about that, Bernice and uh, Tyos. I, in fact, Tyus, who's also a chess trainer and coach, says that she's had she did an arena earlier and she also had some issues. But on the positive note, you guys can now listen to our commentary as it's a real treat to have Pia doing commentary. Um, okay, so white should have things under control, but okay, keep going now with King G4. And it's still not that obvious. No, because we have two pawns and a king and we have two pieces to defend. This is not at all easy it is. Oh, I am just one. Well, yeah, yeah it, it is still, it, it is still, but... Uh, uh -huh. I couldn't find a win there, Pia. Did you find one? I don't know. I wanted to go some. No, I want to go knight f1 check. And knight yeah, two. Maybe this I was looking good. at that too. Okay, but okay, at least she has found a way not to lose. Um, wait a second. I'm going to take that back. No, <laughs> I jinxed her. <laughs> oh my god, what a, what a nice checkmate at the end, though. That's really pretty. That's really pretty. I, I thought that was going to be a draw. Yeah, no, I've seen the checkmate in some, also in some studies. They have this idea in the end that you, you so, so you get the coin to, but she had to go down, yeah. But it's because we want to always go um, upwards on the board, but uh, yeah. Well, we could have gone here, I guess. If we, yeah, we go here, yeah. Anyway, but, except for king be free, yes. So what I want, ah, no, knight f1, you have king f2. No, it doesn't work. Yeah, that's a problem, right? You were hoping that you would they would play pawn takes f1 or rook f1, but yeah. Oh, yeah, the king f2, yeah. No, I think white had to swap the pawns much earlier. So um, so this is just, 
so she did the best i think she did the best yes actually wait are we are we winning here though i thought we would have been winning here um no that point so what she did was the smartest yeah she just ran up to make a queen that was really good actually yeah, really very, well played very well played so it became very very exciting this game yeah so we so what what did white do wrong then probably knight f3 check was wrong um, no, I'm, I'm sorry, knight f3 i think yes she went to take the pawns on the queen side but i think she had to co first to win the king side and then she can start so i think she had to keep the knight closer before the move start moving so uh, i think much earlier uh let's see what what did we have in maybe this position she took an f6 uh, long 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 before a uh, lot long with some moves before sorry maybe okay Maybe here. Uh, I don't know what's happening here. So what, what did happen at G4? I just think she has to go uh, Rook G1 and Knight D4 and to come with the King, something like this. Yeah, or maybe it's Rook E6 and then Knight F5, right? Yeah, they, okay, yeah, that's very good. Yes, this is yeah. when you're right, that, that wins. Because if you win one pawn, yeah, then it's so Rook E6 check was a very good one, yeah. And you win. Yeah. It. Yeah, very, very instructive, though, and good fighting spirit by Black. Boy, oh boy, I mean, like, never give up. Just like our current U.S. women's champion, Jennifer Yu, who, mm -hmm. like, lost the bishop in eight moves and managed to come back and win. <laughs> Absolutely. No, you always have to keep on, keep the game going. And um, because it's it's easy. Sometimes we make mistakes. So, yes, it's very, very good fighting spirit here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. By the way, Tasneem um, didn't get a chance to ask a question earlier and has one question yeah. for you. Tasneem, I'm asking you to unmute and um, tell us where you're from and your question for Pia. Okay, hi, um, I'm from Namibia. I was just wondering, uh, is there any specific like opening that she likes besides the Sicilian like she mentioned earlier? Uh, with, sorry, I didn't understand your question. I, I, it's a specific opening with Sicilian, yes? What did you say more? Yeah, besides, um, besides the Sicilian. Sicilian yeah. yeah. What, what are your other favorite openings? Like, what's your favorite opening for white? Ah, for white. Okay, I play G4. I used to play E4, but when I got to know Quan, uh, he changed me to play D4. So I keep on playing D4, Knight F3, C4. And it's, uh, I think it's quite good because it's not as theoretical as E4. E4 demands more. With D4, I can get, I can get more to um, a line that where I don't have to know the, the, the exact moves, but I need to know the plans. So D4 suits me more. And also my daughter, our daughter also, she's a D4 player. So the whole family, we play D4 as white. Ah, uh, yeah, that's 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 nice. I think you know you learn about so many different types of positions when you play D four, so mm -hmm. it's really good. Um, I'm gonna close all the breakout rooms, and uh, good job, by the way, to uh, the everybody who played, and um, to all of the um, great questions. If somebody has one more question, um, do feel free to ask it now. Uh, you know, if you want to ask anything about how to train better, that would be great. Cameron, hello, thank you so much for coming. You're awesome. Wonderful to see you here. Um, yeah, I, I did want to ask Pia, when you showed this game where your daughter made this amazing double bishop sacrifice, mm -hmm. this, what kind of joy does it give you to see your child making all these genius moves? That's got to be like the best feeling ever, right? Yeah, no, it's fantastic. No, it's really lovely. But I didn't know during the game. I saw it afterwards. So during the game, I didn't know she had played like that because I didn't see any of her moves uh, at that moment. But afterwards, yeah, no, this is it's 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 fantastic. I'm I'm very I'm proud of her not to, to play like that. And I see that she's she's much more aggressive than I am. I'm more I'm more solid. So I have another style. Hmm. Oh, Delilah, yes. What's your question, Delilah? How 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 long was the how many rounds was the tournament supposed to be? I think it was supposed to be like three rounds approximately, but it uh it it got a little buggy because I think chess.com is working on their arena format. But the good note the good part was P and I got to dig into some of the best games today. Um so there was a, a hitting blessing there. Um was... and, and any other uh let's see, Tasmin, did you have a did you have a follow-up, Tasneem? Yeah, I did have a follow up question. Um, I was wondering for like beginners and stuff, what is advice you would give to like get better at playing? 
chess? Uh, wait, uh, to start to play chess, um, I think it's, I don't know, when I, uh, with my daughter, it was very important, for her it was very important to, when she saw me playing, she wanted to play also, but I thought the main thing was to get my daughter to, to play with other children. So I actually brought her to a tournament when she was five and she played with other children. And for, Anna didn't understand this with the points or anything, but in the first tournament she played, she actually lost her first five games. She was much younger than other ones, but then she won. And the happiness was not winning the game, but when you won the game, you could go to the to the arbiter board and you could give the result. And she was so happy that she could do what the other one was doing. And that was the main thing for her. And I, I just think that for children, it's very important to meet other children to play together and uh, because they have so much fun. And that's why I love this junior tournament. Anna was five, Anna were maybe six, seven. They play the game, first they shake hands, they play the game, they shake hands, and then they go out and play together. So um, uh, yeah, I, I think you need to have friends to play with. Um, and then of course it's good there's someone telling you when you make mistakes, but in general, you have to have friends to play with and to enjoy the game in the beginning. And when you try, you should, yeah, play in children tournaments with other ones and just yeah, have fun. Mm. Did Pia, did you or your um your life partner want um ever uh let Anna win? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, at home, yes, yes. We ha we have done that. We have done that. <laughs> Ooh, yes. When did you stop? What age how old was she when you stopped letting her in? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think it was I, I think I, I stopped earlier, absolutely, than than that. Absolutely, I, I did it. I, so I think it's when I realized she was, you know, strong herself, <laughs> but I don't do it. But I don't know what age I stopped. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I, 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 I let my. I didn't when I was when I before I had a kid. I said I would never let my kid win, and then when I had a kid, I was like, well, of course I'm going to let him win. He needs to understand checkmate. But yeah. um, now I'm I'm thinking maybe of stopping in a couple of years because. You know, it's good for them to learn to lose, you know? Yeah, that is very important. It was actually one of the main things for me. I really wanted Anna, when she lost the game, that she was not crying. Because I could see so many girls who were crying. And I just wanted her to forget about the game and go to the next one. Because losing has been something very difficult for me. Uh, Anna's dad is very easy. He can relax. But it has been difficult for me. And I didn't want her to be like me. And I wanted her really to, to enjoy it. And it's part of the game. That we can always lose and win and draw. Anything can happen. So, mm. Thank you so much for staying on to answer a few more questions. Bye to everyone who has to leave. Um, Concilia, did you have one question to wrap things up, perhaps? And I also wanted to give Bernice a shout out real quick. Yeah, I have a question, more of a concern. So I'm trying to I'm playing a high rated player against a high rated player uh, during tournaments. I end up in a drawish position, but instead I invent new tricks and end up making, I don't know what should I do in that position. Like you're seeing, you either drawing or you're going to win, but you don't want, you don't want to lose, but you, do, you want to win at the same time. So what do you want to do? What should I do in that case? Yeah, no, this is the problem. The moment, because we get position where we want to win, but normally when you want to win, you are also opening up to give maybe little chances to your opponent. So either to have complete control and not give any chance at all, but it's difficult. So I just believe that if you go for the win, you might lose some games, but you will win so much more games. So I think you, you should go always for the win. And if there's some mistake, try to learn from them. But in the long run, you will win so much more. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's, that's a much better attitude to be like that. Hmm. You can also that. check Pia's games uh, because Pia is very good in uh, killing off the counterplay. So uh, that's a good uh, tip for everyone to check Pia's games because she's really good in this. Oh, yeah. She, she likes to eliminate uh, the opponent's last threat. So that she, she, and then you will not lose because if they don't have any threats left, then there's only two results to play for. Mm. Yeah, so no, I, you... I yeah. Mm. So I check that. PS games. Yes, great, great advice. Hey, I want to give a shout out to Bernice. I mentioned it earlier in the beginning of the session that you've been doing a lot of work to spread chess, um, giving out chess sets to kids in Kenya. 
who uh, can't afford them. That's beautiful. Do you want to talk about that for a minute, Bernice, and ask a final question? Um, okay, we, get, we go give chessboards to schools in the slums or children's homes, and we come and train them how to play chess. Then we train the teachers so that they continue teaching the children there. At some time, when they've learned a bit, we bring them together and play a small tournament. Oh, that's, awesome. that's beautiful. Mm. Well done, Bernice. Mm. You are a, you. Uh, it took me longer to understand the same thing as you know already with uh, 11 years of age. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you, are, you are definitely smarter than me. What do you mean, Marcus? Mm. Can you elaborate? No, on that we are practice? doing the same thing, but it took longer time to, uh, to get it. You know, I was I, um, I was almost thirty before I got it. <laughs> so Bernice is much smarter than me. To realize that the real purpose of chess is to give it to other yeah, exactly, people. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, so uh, she's much smarter. So she has a brighter future. So it, yeah. because it, I was almost uh, yeah, almost thirty. I was twenty. Uh, 28 when I started this. So I took a uh, much longer time. So she is smarter. I love that. I love that. Grandmaster Pontus Carlson and Grandmaster Pia Cranley giving back. And people like Bernice at only, uh, what, 12? 11. 11. 11. And 11 doing the same. By the way, I got to connect you with Ellen because Ellen um, has some schools that she's working with in Kenya that uh, also have um, it, uh, also a poverty problems right so maybe maybe we can connect and you can do some chess event there as well um but uh beautiful to have grandmaster pia cranley today what a wonderful lesson and just getting your insights into the game is always such a pleasure so many thank yous thank you yeah i have a question yes bernice here with you um what do you advise for training like tactics like training uh, take this training. Yeah, you can go online. You can take a book. There are lots of tactics training, and I think it's good to make it like um, that. It, like that, you make it every day. So you have a you have a time every day when you decide you you use the tactics, and maybe like twenty minutes. It doesn't have to be so long, but it's consistent, and you do it every day. And then to learn the pattern, because tactics are pattern, like we saw here, this double bishop uh, sacrifice, um. Uh, then you will find this pattern in other position. And when you've seen it before, you, you will find it in the game. But you need to learn a lot of different patterns. Um, yeah. it's like, and every time when you solve a problem, it's a little bit like winning a game. It gives like such a fantastic feeling. So tactics are very important. And uh, I could see them in lots of my games now, also in the Olympiad. One of my last moves was a tactics. I made a move. Maybe I sacrificed a piece, but I was winning something back. So tactics are always there in the games, also in the end games. So they are always very yeah. important. And guys, well, remember you. to use your diamond uh, accounts on chess.com because there you can do puzzles. Yeah. Uh, so remember to use that one and uh, work on your tactics because uh, every chess game always ends with a tactic. <laughs> That's yes. always a tactic. So, so no matter how well you play positionally, it ends with a tactic. And if you miss that one, you might lose the advantage or, or in worst case, even lose the game. Yeah. So work on your tactics. It's very important. Oh, very important. Elizabeth Cassidy had a follow-up question on that. What's the best time to train? Like time of day? That's a really interesting question. It's a really good question, I think. I think it's individual. I think it depends on if you're a morning person, evening person. Uh, but I think it's very important that you have energy when you train. Um, it actually, it, the best is to make training as close as possible as when you're com com when you're competing. Um, so you are very focused. You take away everything, anything that can um, distract you from it. And uh, so I don't know. I, I like, uh, for example, when I play chess, I like to have a big lunch first. So I like to have to have a lot of energy. But I think this is individual. But you should, I think it's better to train when you have. You can focus and you will get more out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, everyone. Um, thank you again to Pia and have a wonderful rest of the weekend, everyone. Yes. You should also, before we add, we should uh, also uh, give a shout out to um, Jamie.
from uh, Namibia ah, that was yeah. also at the Olympiad. That's right, Jamie. Um, is she still here? Oh, yeah, she's here from Namibia. Yeah, she was also in the Olympiad. So Pia was not the only one who was there. From the group. And she's only 14, I think. Did you so enjoy it, Jamie? She... I enjoyed it a lot. It was really nice. Yeah. It's a very special and... experience. And she what broke Pia's record. Part? She also broke Pia's record with one year. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah, it's true. 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 At yeah, this very young age, played Olympia. Yes, that is great. Yeah, you will have lots of Olympias to play in. And it's just it's just such a wonderful tournament, really, a competition. And to play there with your team, with your friends, and just meet all these people. Sana? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Sana, did you want to say goodbye? Okay, I just wanted to ask a quick question. I hope you won't mind. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Miss Pia for being here. So, um, there's a problem. Like, um, like what if you lose concentration in the game? Like, you you just don't want to calculate and you start rushing up anyway to solve this? Or If it happens, yeah, it can happen, absolutely. Um, I, I know for me, especially with age now, because I'm not so young any longer, I need to have a lot of energy. So for me, it's very important that I have slept well, that I have had some time to rest before the game, that I have had my big lunch. This is very important to me. And uh, so uh, for to, and, and also the happiness. I notice if I feel happy, uh, I get more confident. And then I make the move, I make better decisions. So I can play the same position different days and I will play them differently depending on how my mood is and what energy I, I have. So, so, so yeah, so, so it's uh, absolutely. Mm. Wow. Thank you so much. Love oh. that. <laughs> so being, being happy is part of your job in chess. I like that, you know? That is your job as a human to try to get happy and hopefully chess helps you with that. That's what, that's the goal, helps you be happier. Um, that's what we want. Well, Pia and her daughter, Anna, are great examples of that happiness through chess. So um, yeah, look, look at them uh, as great role models. And uh, yeah, let's uh, think more about that and, uh, and, and update us with your progress and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much to Pontus as well. Um, for inviting Pia and to uh, Judy. So yes, thank you all. And especially to Grandmaster Pia Cranley. Thank you so much. Thank you for- Thank you, Pia. Thank you, Pia, for coming. And uh, you, now Pia. the last thing we need to do before we finish is that we have to promise that Jennifer is, is going to come to Africa. Ah, I yeah, there yeah. To visit. Yes. And uh, after the pandemic, it was the first time I could go. So I met with a bunch of the, the girls. And it was uh, amazing. And I was both in Namibia and in Kenya. So uh, I met with and played some games with Bernice and yeah, with Yvonne and Mercy and uh, a bunch of the girls and with Jamie. So we checked some of her openings. So now it's um, Jennifer's turn. I would so love when are you coming, Jennifer? I got, yeah, I would love to come to Kenya. I have to figure that out. You're right. Yes. Oh, and Hannah says, when are you coming to Uganda? Exactly. All right, I got to, I got to get a tour in. <laughs> All right. Thank you, when everyone. When is the African tour happening? When is it happening? <laughs> so the, this is your homework, the next session. Uh, uh, that's my homework. Okay. Yes. <laughs> my tour. I like that. Bye, Mividicha. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye